In this lab assignment, we'll be using the program you wrote for the Day 20 homework, the Timed Traffic Light Project. We're going to save it to a new folder as Lab 7 because we're going to prepare this program to download to the actual Micro 820 PLC in our lab. Now, if you remember, the functionality of the program is going to simulate a timed traffic signal. It'll begin with the Main Street green light turning on for 10 seconds, allowing traffic to go down Main Street and the first street pedestrian crossing light should also go on allowing pedestrians to cross as well. Those should be on for 10 seconds followed by the yellow light and then the red light. Once the red light turns on the first street green light should also turn on allowing traffic to go down first street and the pedestrian crossing light should also turn on allowing pedestrians to cross main street. Those should be on for 10 seconds followed by the yellow light for two seconds and then the green again which should also turn on the Main Street green light and start the cycle all over. The function of the Start button should reset the lights back to the beginning. No matter where they were in the timing sequence, pushing the Start button should turn on the Main Street green light again and start the sequence all over. You can see here how the physical devices have been actually wired to the I.O. terminals on the PLC. And one of the main objectives of this lab is to help you see how and why we segregate I.O. And I'll explain what we mean by segregating I.O. in just a minute. This is a photo inside the electrical cabinet. And if you remember, there's a 24 volt DC power supply that takes 120 volts from the wall outlet, converts it to 24 volt DC to supply power to the rest of the system. This is our Micro 820 PLC. You can see the part number as well as the IP address that's set for that PLC. And here's how the input and output terminals have been wired to the physical devices. There's the input terminals and how they've been wired. And here are the output terminals and how they've been wired. And if you recall, the Micro 820 didn't have enough digital outputs to wire each light to a separate output terminal. So we wired both the First Street green light and the Main Street pedestrian light to the same terminal. So when we turn one of them on, it turns them both on. We did the same thing to the Main Street green light and the First Street pedestrian light. We wired both of those to digital out six so that they would both turn on at the same time. Now this means that the pedestrian lights won't blink like they did in the day 20 homework assignment. But that's okay, we can deal with pedestrian lights that are just on solid rather than blinking. Here I am in Connected Components Workbench and all I did was open the day 20 homework assignment and did a save project as to my lab 7 folder and called it the lab 7 project instead. And once I did that, I right clicked on the controller and had to change the controller because it was originally set up for the Micro 850 simulated controller. So we needed to change that controller to this Micro 820. You can see here in the general tab the part number for that controller. And when we go to the Ethernet tab, you'll notice that we have to select to configure the IP address ourselves rather than to obtain it automatically. And the IP address that we've configured is 192.168.5.100. So you'll need to make sure to configure your Micro 820 controller in CCW to this Ethernet address so that you don't overwrite it on the actual PLC. Now you'll also notice under programs that I now have two programs one that I've called I.O. Mapping and the other that I've called the Timed Traffic Light. This Timed Traffic Light program is the exact same program that I created for the Day 20 homework assignment. I haven't changed this one bit. It's the exact same. Because if you remember, this program referenced global variables. It didn't reference input and outputs on a PLC directly. That's why we don't have to change this. That's the beauty of this principle I'm going to teach you about segregating I.O. You write a program and you don't reference I.O. directly. You reference global variables. Then you simply create a new program, I've called mine I.O. Mapping, where you map the input and output terminals to those global variables. The reason we do this is because what if the electrician who wires the control panel wires it slightly different than we anticipated? Maybe they wired one of the lights to a different output terminal than we thought. Well, if I've segregated I.O., I just come to this program and I change the mapping. I don't have to go to my timed traffic light program, my actual program, and go find every reference to that I.O. terminal and make sure I remember to change every reference. That's the beauty of segregating I.O. Write your program to reference global variables and then after, create a new program that simply maps the input and output terminals to those global variables. 
the way you create a separate program is you just right click on programs and say add a new program. In this case I added a new ladder diagram program. And you can see within this program there are seven rungs. That's because there are seven inputs and outputs that need to be mapped. And I use the MOV, the move instruction, that basically assigns one variable to another. And you'll notice with my inputs, this is actually an input terminal on the PLC. So I'm reading an input terminal on the PLC and copying that value into my global variable that's then used in the program. So in the inputs, I read the input terminal and send that value to the global variable. And I do just the opposite for outputs. I take the global variable and then I send that value to the output terminal of the PLC. So that's what we mean by segregating I.O. It's very wise programming practice and it'll save you a lot of time and headache later on. When I download this program to the PLC, both of these programs will get downloaded automatically and the PLC will simply run through the I.O. mapping program all those rungs and then it runs through all the rungs of the time traffic light and it'll just run through those two programs over and over again and it'll do them in sequence it'll do this program first followed by this program second so now that I've created the two programs and I'm ready to download them to the PLC I've got to make sure that this micro 820 is configured to the right Ethernet address so we don't override the existing Ethernet address on the PLC and we also need to change the IP address to the Ethernet port on your computer so that the first six digits are the same. That way they'll communicate with each other. So let me remind you how to change the IP address of the Ethernet port on your own laptop. You simply come down to here and go into settings. In settings you go to network and internet settings and you choose the Ethernet. Under Ethernet you just change the adapter options. Now you can see here that I have my Ethernet port of my laptop and I also have a second Ethernet port that's connected to the BYU network. This is the Ethernet port that I'm going to be connecting to the PLC. So if I right click on that and select properties, I can go to this Internet Protocol version 4, TCP, IP version 4 and open up its properties. By default it may be set to obtain an IP address automatically. We want to set a static IP address to the Ethernet port on our laptop of 192.168.5.102. That's slightly different than the Ethernet address of the PLC. They have to be different because they're different devices. But at least the first six digits are the same which will allow them to communicate properly. So once we've set the IP address on our laptop we can now come back to Connected Components Workbench and download the program to the PLC. We can use this download tool, we can use this download tool, or we can simply right click on the Micro 820 and select download. They all do the same thing. Here's the electrical control panel in the lab and I've downloaded the program to the PLC. I hit the start button and you can see that the green light turns on allowing traffic in that direction. And after 10 seconds the yellow light goes on for two seconds and then the opposite green light goes on allowing traffic in that direction and that stays on for 10 seconds. Then the yellow light goes on for two seconds followed by the cycle starting over again. And you'll notice when I hit the start button it forces the cycle to start over again no matter where it was in the sequence. 